Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Jenny Dildine, the LDS Mission Coach, and you are listening to the LDS Mission Podcast, episode number 102, Your Superpowers. Hey, I'm Jenny, the LDS Mission Coach, and whether you're preparing to serve a mission, currently serving, a returned missionary, or a missionary mama like me, I created this podcast just for you. Are you searching for epic confidence, ready to love yourself, and to learn the how of doing hard things? Then let's go. I will help you step powerfully into your potential and never question your purpose again. It's time to embrace yourself, embrace your mission, embrace your life, and embrace what's next. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Happy May to you. End of May, I suppose. Happy beginning of June and happy everything else. It's just a fun time of year, a fun season. I was talking to someone yesterday and I was like, tis the season for bridal showers. I was at a bridal shower last night. Tis the season for weddings. Tis the season for mission homecomings and mission farewells and weddings. We've got lots of fun comings and goings and graduations. My own son graduated last weekend and that was a really a good time and so just proud of everything that he has accomplished. Um, he's just such a good kid. I love him so much. So, um, Whatever you are going through, whatever kind of fun things you're involved in, I'm excited for you. New chapters, new seasons, new opportunities, new possibility right around the corner for many of us. And uh, that just makes me excited. So today we are talking about your superpowers and this is something that I've been thinking about for a little while, not only because I've seen it come up a couple times with some of my clients, but also it's something that I have been trying to work on in my own life. And I'm going to get more into why this has been something that I've been working on a little bit later in the podcast. So stay tuned for that. But um, first, I want to start off by saying that last weekend, my family went to see the new Marvel movie, The New Guardians of the Galaxy. And isn't it number three? I should know. But we went to see it. And if you haven't seen it, if you're on your mission or whatever, it was good. It was also super intense. <laughs> there was a lot of kind of heavy themes in there, but also very good. And the thing that... So as I was watching that movie and other superhero movies as of late. Summer seems to be a time where a lot of these come out. I just was thinking about all of us and how we all have superpowers. And they're not the same as like flying. You know who my favorite superhero is? I really think is Ant-Man because <laughs> he's just so chill and like ordinary, but also, yeah, can pack a punch. Anyway, Everyone has their own, as you look at all of those superheroes and the Avengers and the Guardians and the way that they work together, everybody has their own unique gifts and talents. And I think we're a lot like this. And I think that sometimes what we tend to do is we tend to look at ourselves and the way that we are and the way that we show up in the world and we think that it's not right. And we tend to believe that it's a weakness in some way if I show up shy or if I show up tired or I show up um, like not as motivated or whatever, whatever might be going on for you. And here's what I want to dive in today, into today is that perhaps we're maybe wrong about all of it. We're maybe wrong that there's a certain type of person or a certain personality trait that is better than another person. Maybe we're wrong about that. Maybe we're all kind of like the Avengers and we all have unique superhero gifts. Okay. 
and this is what I really started to believe, not only about myself, but about all of the humans on the planet. So one of the scriptures that came to mind as I was thinking about this concept of all of us having superpowers is 3 Nephi 12, 14 through 16. And it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I give unto you to be a light of this people. A city is a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Okay, so we've all heard this a hundred times. We know what it says. And then it says, Behold, do men light a candle and put it under a bushel? Nay, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Now, I think we hear this and we're like, okay, so I'm the candlestick. My gifts and my talents are the candlestick, but I am not going to share that. And it's not worthwhile to share if it's not the same gift or candlestick that someone else has. We have in our minds this certain way that we think we're supposed to show up as a missionary, that we think we're supposed to show up as a teacher, that we think we're supposed to show up as we're dating, that we think we're supposed to show up as a roommate. And instead, what it says is that everybody has their own candlestick. And when we shine our candlestick, it gives light to the whole house. It doesn't say just certain kinds of candlesticks, like if you're bold or if you're confident or whatever. No, it just says, put your candles, your candlestick, the one that you have, all of your personal gifts and talents, giveth light to that are in the house, to all that are in the house. Now, what we're going to kind of dive into, right, is often we don't see our gifts and talents as gifts and talents. We see them as weaknesses. We don't see them as superpowers when instead we could just decide. And what I really believe to be true is that they are, that they are superpowers that you have. And then it goes on to say, therefore, let your light so shine before this people. I mean, I'd heard this scripture. I mean, could we even say thousands of times have we heard the scriptures in our life? But as I was preparing for this podcast, the word your stuck out to me. We always go, let your light so shine. But what about let your light so shine before this people that they may see your good works, which are not going to be the same works as someone who's next to you or your companion or your mission president or your roommate. Your good works are different then they're good works. But it says, therefore, let your light so shine before this people that they may see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. Listen, I really believe that there's no such thing as a personality or character flaw. Our heavenly parents made all of us. Okay. And I mean, I can hear some of you thinking, well, what about this instance where there's this, I don't know, sociopath or whatever? Maybe, maybe that would be the exception. But by and large, at least the people who are listening to this podcast, I don't believe you have a character flaw. We are amazing and valuable just the way we are. Our heavenly parents made us with characteristics that are like theirs. And that's pretty amazing. So instead of always looking at yourself and thinking, oh, I should be more this, I should be more bold, or I should be more confident, or I should have more achievements or whatever's going on for you, just take a step back and be like, I might be wrong. Maybe I'm focusing on the wrong things. Maybe my heavenly parents made me this way for a specific reason. Maybe they gave me this candlestick, this group of candlesticks for a reason because I have a specific work to do. I need to let my light shine that people can see my good works. And that is, listen, the only way that you can glorify your father in heaven. And we do glorify him when we lean into who we are and shine that to the world. It's never going to work for you to shine, try to mimic someone else's light. It's never going to work for you to try to mimic 
someone else's superpower. Our heavenly parents made you. There's only one of you and you get to show up in your life and on your mission as you and you're amazing. Here are some of the things that society actually values, right? They value achievement. They value busyness. They value wealth. They value hard work, boldness, confidence, right? They really, and it makes sense that the world values what we can see people doing on the outside of themselves because that's all we can see, right? We can't see inside of someone. So we tend to value the things that we can see people doing. But listen, your superpowers are yours. And just because society doesn't value your gifts, your superpowers, doesn't mean they're not valuable. Okay, let me give you an example so you can see what I'm talking about. So for a long time, and I've mentioned this several times on the podcast, which is for a long time I had this belief or this thought that I was weak. And it's been it's been very like pervasive in everything that I've done. Like I'm physically weak, I'm emotionally weak, I'm spiritually weak, like I'm not as strong as so-and-so, I'm not um, as capable as this person. I actually like sort of have believed for a long time, <laughs> which makes no sense now, as, and as I say it out loud, that I was fundamentally flawed in some way and that there was no way that I could be as successful or achieve as much as another person. But as I've learned and like really started to understand myself, it's not that I do it wrong. It's not that I'm flawed. I just do it differently. And so when I look at what the world values and what society values, and I don't, that doesn't line up for me. Instead of believing like something's wrong with me, I just know that I have different gifts. I have different superpowers. Now, one of the things that we tend to do, right, though, is we're like, oh, well, if you have this superpower, that's better. And if we have this other superpower, not so good. But where I finally got to was, do you know what weakness, like my weakness, my meekness, my um, stillness, my ability to slow down and really meet people where they are. My whole life, I thought of that as a weakness because I, I just couldn't keep up with people or whatever. And now I see that that is my greatest strength. It's my greatest superpower. superpower. I realized not everybody functions the way I do, but the way I function for me in my body, in my life is magic and it's the way that I can make the biggest impact. So there is no such thing as character flaw, characters that are better or worse or not as great. One that we might have a negative sort of like idea about is that we shouldn't be shy. We should be bold and especially on the mission. Like I hear this like, how am I going to get over my shyness and be more bold? And I'm like, you don't have to do that. What if your superpower is being shy and being quiet and being meek? And, and what's true is the way that you show up in that way when you are being authentic and true to your superpowers and owning those will be far more magical and have way more power than if you were trying to be something that you're not. Let me give you another example. I was talking to a client and she tends to have these big emotional waves. And she was like, I just hate that I'm so emotional all the time. And I said to her, I said, listen, what if this deep, like feeling emotion that you experience in your life is your superpower? And I said, I get it. Like, you've probably been judging yourself for a long time. Like, why can't I just show up like so-and-so? Or why can't I have that superpower? 
But what if we leaned into the fact that you being somewhat emotional and sensitive is your greatest strength? It was it it is what allows you to connect to people. It's what allows you to meet them where they are. And you perhaps are living a more full, fleshed out life than the person who's non-emotional. Because you're like diving into the deep end with people. And you're diving into the deep end of your life, always deeply feeling. So see what I mean? We sort of have, I think in our world and in our society, we sort of have categorized traits into good and bad, it would be better if I had this superpower or if I if I didn't have this other weakness or whatever. And what I'm saying is let's throw all of that out. Your superpowers are not the same as your companion's superpowers or your best friend's superpowers. And they're not supposed to be. All right? Now, sometimes we might start to worry about judgment when we start really tapping to what our superpowers are. Let's say our superpower is stillness. Maybe our superpower is deep feeling. Maybe our superpower is observing a room and and being able to really kind of, you know, connect with people in a room one-on-one instead of being the one up on the stage. The one on the stage is not any better. Your superpower you are given because you came to this earth to meet people one-on-one and and to connect with them in a different way and perhaps the only way that they can be connected with. And that's an amazing thing. So if someone sees you like, oh, well, why is so-and-so just always sitting in the corner and not, you know, you know, on the stage talking to everyone or the center of attention? So what? Don't worry about their judgment. Get chill with you. Start to figure out what your superpowers are. And what is really fascinating about this, you guys, is what you might find is what you think is a weakness And what you've been told is a weakness your whole life and what society tells you is a weakness is actually your superpower. Now, especially in an environment, I want to point this out, especially in an environment where a lot of people look like you, believe like you, talk like you, we start to believe that there's a better way to be and a worse way to be. And, And I hear this a lot, right, with missions. Like if I just need to be more kind. I just need to be more loving. I just need to be more bold. I need to be more confident. I need to, um, you know, make promises, you know, with the spirit. I need to be more spiritual or whatever. Like, no. You know what you need to do? You need to be you. You need to tap into your strength, your superpower. Okay, here's what's true, you guys. We need all the people. We need you. We need you exactly the way you came with all of the gifts that you've been given. And we need you to show up like you and to to let your light so shine. We need all the people. So here's what we need to do. I'm going to give you... A few ideas about how you can figure out what your superpowers are. And really, as I wrote out this list, I was like, I could do a whole podcast on all of these. So I'm just going to sort of, you know, lay them out here, give you a couple ideas about something that you can think about. And then um, maybe at some point I'll do other podcasts on these. But okay, so here's a few things that you can do to figure out your superpowers to understand that whatever you thought was a weakness is not a weakness, but a strength, okay? Go inside of yourself for answers instead of outside. So this is what I'm talking about. Instead of looking around to what all the other missionaries are doing about how you should be, go inside. 
be like, huh, you know what I think we should do is I think we should do it this way. I think that it would be more effective for us to not be so bold. I think it would be more effective for us to really connect in this way with this person and have a give and take relationship with this person. Whatever that is for you. Or if you're like with all of your roommates and and everybody's like super stressing about their finals or whatever is going on or super stressing about dating. It's like, then we all of a sudden think, oh, well, that's what I need to do. No, that's not what you need to do. You need to go inside and follow your intuition. Another way we could say intuition is your gut level. Like in my gut, this is what I feel like is the right move for me. Or the spirit. When we like get rid of all those distractions, all of those like should be, should do, should think, should feel, should says, when we get rid of all of those and you go inside, you will know. Okay, number two, trust yourself. Trust that your way, your gut level, your intuition, the spirit, the way that you are being, the way you are existing in the world is always the right way for you. You kind of got to keep your blinders on. I think I talked about this on my podcast with Jody Moore a couple episodes ago is you kind of got to keep your blinders on. I mean, like, nope, I trust me. Um, oh, look what that person's doing. Uh, nope, right back here. I trust me. Number three, be an advocate for individuality. The movie that just came to my head right now, <laughs> this high school musical, and how there's, I'm thinking of that scene where she's like, I like to pop and lock and break. Dancing is my passion. And then there's the baker and... You know, everybody has a different thing that they have to give. And none of them are right and none of them are wrong. They are all superpowers. So what I mean by being an advocate for individuality is really when you're in a situation where everybody's sort of thinking the same and acting the same and being the same and someone is acting and being a little different Be an advocate for that person. Be an advocate for yourself. When everyone's like, oh, we need to support the basketball team and the football team, like you be the one to be like, you know what I think we should probably support is the band and the ice hockey team. Or we should all be more confident. We should all be more bold. You just be like, you know what I think we should be? I think all of us should be what we are. Or even if someone's coming at you and they're like, you know what? You need to be more blank. Just be like, actually, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll think about that. I'll think about if I want to be more blank, but I'm actually pretty cool with who I am. Okay. Number one, two, three. This is number four. Get away from hierarchical thinking. So hierarchical thinking is where we start to believe that there's a good, better, and best. But when we get away from hierarchical thinking, we think of all of ourselves the same. So there is no such thing as a good, better, or best way to be a missionary. There's no such thing as a good, better, or best way to be a student or an athlete. There is no good, better, or best way to run a business. There is no good, better, or best character trait. There is no good, better, or best personality. There is no good, better, or best superpower. They're all equally amazing and equally powerful. Number five, flip what you believe to be your weakness on its head. And this is kind of what I did with my client in that session, right? Where she was just like, oh, I just don't like that I'm so emotional all the time. Ask yourself, what if being emotional 
is my superpower? What if that's true, you guys? What if you think, what if the thing that you think is your character flaw is actually your greatest gift and asset? How could that be true? And maybe not even according to society and the world and all of the things that we value in the world from a superficial level. But perhaps if you chose to believe it's your superpower and started leaning into it and feeding it and, and really living in to who you are authentically, that that light is what you have been sent here to share. Your light. Your good works. I used to look around me and think I should be more like so-and-so or I should run my business like this or I should be more busy or I should be more active or I should be more confident or I should work harder and all of that. But who decided that stuff anyway? Who decided that that is the way it's supposed to be? It kind of reminded me like who decided that guest jeans were popular when I was in high school or it's best to be busy or the only way to get ahead in life is to grind or who, who decided that the best missionaries are bold? I don't know who decided that. But listen, all of our opinions about all of it It's all just thoughts, all made up that people decided to think. And we might be wrong. You know what might be true? Is that it doesn't matter what kind of genes you have. It might be best to rest sometime. That the only way to get ahead is not to grind, but to show up authentically as yourself with your superpowers. And maybe the very best missionaries hold back. And know when to hold their tongue. And know when to feel with someone instead of being bold. So this other scripture, I have a couple scriptures that I want to finish with. This scripture came to my mind, um, Ether 12, 27. And you've probably also heard this scripture many, many times. I'm going to share a little bit of like a different insight that I had with it. This time around. And if men come unto me, I will show unto them their weakness. I give unto men weakness that they may be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then I will make weak things become strong unto them. Now, so many times when I've read this scripture, I've thought it means Okay, so if I have a little bit of anxiety and that's what's making me humble, then if I have faith in Christ, then I won't have anxiety anymore. And this part where he says, then will I make weak things become strong unto them. And what what that meant to me is that we will see it differently. We will see our weaknesses as a strength. Not that we won't feel anxious ever again, but maybe if we trust ourselves and we trust the plan and we trust that our heavenly parents didn't make flawed people, then we will see ourselves as strong. We will see that weakness as a strength. We'll be able to flip it on its head. So my son, Nathan, when he was here this weekend for my son's graduation, we were kind of talking about this sort of idea and weak things becoming strong. And he shared this scripture with me from 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. And it, I really loved it because it added just a little bit more nuance and depth to this scripture that we really like in Ether 12, 27. And at first it talks about how that... We are all given a thorn in our flesh. Um, Because if we didn't, then we maybe would be exalted beyond measure. So we're all sort of given these thorns, quote unquote, weaknesses in our flesh to, um, to help us be humble, right? And to help us not be exalted above 
uh, measure. So then in verse eight, it says, for this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. So he's basically saying, I wanted this thorn gone. I wanted my shyness gone. I wanted my um, my weakness gone. I wanted my, for me, it was weakness, right? Like, I just want to be rid of this. I want my quietness gone. I want my emotionalness gone, being too emotional. I want that gone. Verse eight, for this thing, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And verse nine, it says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. It doesn't say my strength makes weakness go away (laughs) and that you'll never struggle with anything ever again. My strength is made perfect in weakness. And then the author who's writing this says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Oh, I love that so much. You guys, just maybe play with this idea that the thing you thought was your weakness is your strength. And because of Christ, and because of his atonement, and because of his grace, that our weakness our, all, our weaknesses can already be our strengths now. Not that they'll go away, but what if anxiety could be your superpower? What if being shy is your superpower? What if being emotional or overly sensitive is your superpower? It's not a weakness. It's your strength. Flip all of those on, your, on their head. Instead of thinking, I should be more bold, just decide, I shouldn't be more bold. It's actually better if I'm more quiet and reserved. That is my best way to connect with people. Instead of thinking, I should be more confident, decide, you know what? I shouldn't be more confident. I should be what I am, which is humble and meek and willing to meet people where they are. So listen, what might happen as you start to embrace more of yourself, as as soon as you start to see your superpowers, is you might feel like you're changing, right, from the inside. And you'll feel this change and you'll feel this strength. Kind of like when uh, Spider-Man, like, realized that he had all of these superpowers, right? And it was really awkward for him at first to try to figure out how to use those superpowers. And you might be like, I'm totally different on the inside. But no one's seeing that I'm different on the outside. But listen, it doesn't matter. That's okay. No one else needs to see your superpower so long as you see and value your superpowers. I was talking to one friend, Jody Moore, and this was a long time ago, and she probably won't even remember that she gave me this advice. But I said this to her, like, I feel like I'm changing. I feel like I'm stepping into my superpowers. I feel like I'm becoming more powerful and showing up more authentically in my life. But then I go to like award function and no one knows that I'm different. And she said, that's okay. No one needs to know. And I said, but then I find myself wanting to revert to the the former version of me that doesn't love me and, and worries what everyone thinks. And she's like, I have a trick for you. She said, just pretend like you've got a little superhero cape in your purse or in your backpack or in your missionary side satchel thing. No one else needs to know. You can have your secret superpower. They don't need to see it. The people around you don't need to see it so long as you see it and you value you. Everyone has a different superpower. Everyone has tons of superpowers. And as you're watching the Guardian, as I was watching the Guardians of the Galaxy movie and the Avengers movies, what you find is it doesn't, they can't beat anyone. They can't accomplish anything if there's just one of them. They need everybody. When they're fighting in those battles, as soon as one person's super 
power is like, oh, that didn't work. Then someone else comes in and they're all different and they're all equally valuable and important. None is better than the other. So listen, friends, you shouldn't be more bold or more motivated or less shy or less emotional or less tired. You should just be what you are. And you pull that superhero cape out whenever you need it. And you got to figure out what that super superhero cape is first for you. Because you shouldn't be more or less of anything. You should just be who you are. It really is you shining your light and sharing your good works is really the best way to be. It's what you've been sent here to do. All right, everyone, I hope you have the most amazing week. Go soar, go find your superpowers and share them with everyone. All right, everyone, take care. Have the most amazing week. Bye-bye. Serving a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints can present a unique set of challenges. And many of those challenges you might not even see coming. So you're gonna want a unique set of solutions. It's easier than you think to overcome worry and anxiety, serve the successful mission you've always dreamed of, and navigate your post-mission experience with confidence. That is why I created some amazing free goodies that I'm sharing in my show notes. Maybe you'll want to grab the free training for preparing missionaries, my video course for RMs, or maybe you and I should hop on a free strategy call. If you're ready to take your preparedness to serve or your preparedness to come home, to the next level, then go grab one of those freebies. And in the meantime, no matter which part of the mission experience you are involved in, just know that Jenny, the LDS mission coach, is thinking about you every single day.